Which university? Which university? Uh, Penn State. Penn State. University. USA. Mas apa itu namanya? Tio. Uh, 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 ini yang di Zoom ada berapa? Ada 19 orang. Uh, Coba siapa aja? Mbak, subscribe dulu ya. Stop screen, sir. Stop share screen. Aku nanti di YouTube, ini nggak bisa nih. Itu nggak, karena kita pakai suara ini, jadi nanti kalau pakai ini, kedengeran. Yang di zoomnya. Oh, uh, halo, yang di zoom kedengeran nggak suaraku? Kedengaran, Bu. Oke. Okay. Kedengeran nih, Bu. Kedengeran, Bu. Kenapa sih nggak pada ke sini? Ya ampun, deh. <laughs> Coba siapa aja, siapa aja gitu. Nggak ada. Hmm. Aku nggak tahu siapa aja. Yang... Itu ada Pak Jamilus, Pak Sabda, Pak Jazuli, Pak Jazuli. Ya, probably we can start. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat pagi. Salam. Uh, selamat pagi teman-teman uh, sekalian yang di Zoom maupun yang di uh, offline. Uh, kita sekarang uh, we are now um, have a Yes, lecture uh, from uh, Professor Santa Kuman. Um, he is uh, from Azim Fenzi University in uh, Bangalore, India. Uh, welcome to our research center hall, Professor Santa Kuman. 
uh, it is very uh, nice to have you um, in our uh, guest lecture seminar series. So this is our uh, guest lecture seminar that we conducted as not every month, but uh, if somebody um, expert <laughs> coming from overseas, we invite them to have a guest lecture series. So uh, Professor Santak Kumar is a professor from uh, Azim Tenji University. His uh, research uh, interests are um, economic uh, governance and then uh, human resources governance. He's uh, working um, He's working previously on peatland uh, restoration project. Uh, so his presentation today, he will uh, explore how um, peatland restoration in Indonesia um, have challenges, uh, especially like um, there's a social economic um, impact uh, of peatland restoration to the local community and livelihood. So he will explore how this uh, peatland restoration, whether the community uh, can integrate with the peatland restoration and then conservation at the same time, like uh, the balance between uh, conservation and sustainable uh, sustainable uh, pitland uh, utilization. So this is like, a, we have, so, um, as we know that we experience um, many episodes of uh, forest fire every year, and then the cause of this forest fire is um, the burning because of uh, opening the land uh, for agriculture or plantation in a, especially in a pitland area. So pitland areas are very vulnerable to the risk of fire. Um, Rio, especially uh, in Sumatra, Rio, and then in Kalimantan, in central Kalimantan, is very prone uh, to the um, uh, risk of fire. Uh, so in 2015, uh, the government of Indonesia has, uh, after the worst forest fire, they launched the peatland restoration in 2016 with the establishment of BRG, uh, Badan Restorasi Gambut. Uh, and then they have uh, mandated uh, to have an obligation to uh, restore the, uh, the degraded peatland uh, for 2 million uh, hectare uh, across Indonesia. And then uh, the uh, work uh, has been finished in 2020, 2020. Uh, and then uh, the government has mandated to extend their work uh, into, uh, into four more four more years. And the obligation is uh, to restore the pitland and uh, also uh, mangrove uh, restoration. So mangrove and pitland restoration. In the in the uh, during the peatland restoration, actually the government uh, the government appointed BRG uh, as a focal point for this uh, peatland restoration, and they they have a, like a program of TR uh, rewetting, revegetation, and then re, re, re wetting, revegetation, and uh, something related to the rehabilitation or something. Uh, so. Um, it is about the how uh, to plan the uh, peatland into another uh, like um, the plantation that are suitable to the uh, peatland areas and then reverting to make the peatland uh, uh, wet again. So because uh, the dry uh, peatland make it uh, very vulnerable to fires and then the, um, another R is how uh, the community uh, can have a uh, sustainable livelihood to the pitland area. So in the in the um, implementation, there is a um, um, problem with the implementation because of most of the people are depend on their livelihood into the pitland area. So um, like uh, the community is still uh, uh, using them 
for like agriculture and sector and then when the government um in, impose the burning uh banning of the uh burning of the land of pit land so they think that the local community has uh, their uh, right uh, human right uh, being violated by the government because they cannot um plant the rice uh, again through the burning uh, burning with uh, by burning activities so uh, mostly like in Daya communities in central Kalimantan, they they are not doing this um, uh, paddy local. So they plant the rice and then they leave it and then uh, they going to the something in the uh, mining and then when they come back they harvesting. Uh, but they cannot do this uh, practices anymore because the government has banned this uh, burning practices. So um, now uh, most of the people are uh, shifting their livelihood into like um, a labor in the plantation area and etc. So um, I think there's a problem with the balancing how to do the conservation and then the uh, utilization of the pitland area. So uh, we will um, we will have we will have a professor Santa Kumar. Uh, we'll uh, explain and explore about this um, economic uh, and environment uh, linkages uh, between uh, restoration and community livelihood and how like international uh, governments should also support this um, pitland restoration, uh, not only uh, Indonesian government because we have uh, like a limited budget for this uh, pitland restoration and we need uh, international support uh, for this um, um, report. So, uh, please uh, welcome Professor Santa Kumar to deliver your script. Thank you. So, somebody will uh, change the slides. Uh, yeah, I will the uh, No, we don't have it. No. <laughs> okay, that's uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think uh, this is a great opportunity for me to talk to. Uh, researchers in Indonesia. Indonesia is a country that I like love very much. I come to Indonesia almost every year for the last 10 years. In addition to my role as a professor at Sindhrin University in India, I also serve as a consultant at UN organization. So I was a consultant to UN, the United Nations Environment Program for several years in the past. And uh, <clears throat> currently I'm a consultant to UNCC, United Nations Convention to Combat Certification. UNCC has a new initiative, which is called G20 Global Initiative. You all know about G20, and Indonesia was the president last year. Indonesia, India is the president this year. And uh, two years ago, I think Brazil has started to be the president after. A few years ago, Saudi Arabia was the president of G20 countries. And Saudi Arabia started a new initiative by allocating a substantial amount of money to prevent or to decelerate land degradation. So according to that initiative, they want to reduce land degradation by 50% by 2040. So for that purpose, Saudi Arabia has allocated money and gave that money to UNCCD to create a new initiative, and that is called G20 Global Land Initiative. So I was sort of, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a consultant, not a full time consultant to this G20 Global Initiative. So I'm advising them on issues related to economics, economics and politics, public policy. So as part of this assignment, I came to Indonesia last year. Uh, by the, in the purpose of looking at the challenges of peatland restoration or 
and I had discussed detailed discussions with the BRGM. BRGM also facilitated my visit to Riau Islands. I could also talk to the Ministry of Environment and Forest officials at the level. I could also meet some of the communities where the participation was happening, uh, where the BRGM financing and support. I could also talk to the people on the ground. So based on that, I think I've prepared a report on the peatland storage. I shared it with you. Uh, so but I thought it was an important opportunity for me to get the feedback from the isolation researchers. And that's why I say that it's an important OK, we all know that the Burning of the plants is a problem. It's not only a problem for Indonesia, it's a problem for the region. It's also a problem for the globe. It can be an important contributor to the contributor of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And uh, so this is something very everybody acknowledge and uh, something important. I think Indonesian government has also taken, I think, note on that. I think she has already mentioned the effort from 2015 to 2020. The establishment of BRGM under the president itself was an important activity. So this, the issue is known. I think the government is also very interested in addressing that problem. And there was some study. Like as part of my work, I was also doing a literature review. And I could see a number of studies by Indonesian researchers and by researchers from other countries, from Australia, Europe and United States, uh, who have looked at different aspects of this peatland growing issue, especially on ecological features of peatlands, environmental impacts of burning peatlands, effectiveness of governmental actions to some extent, uh, and institutional actions. How do we connect the livelihood of people and the conservation? So those so many people have studied this. So I didn't want to play that. No, what I'm doing is anything very new or anything radically different. But I think I have a point which I think I will be able to mention, and I would be happy to get your feedback on. But there is a general perception that that find the recognition of this issue by the government of Indonesia, uh, despite the global attention, we need to do not go to address the problem. What has been done so far is not enough. And that perception is there. I think we all agree on that. Next one, please. So this presentation or this, or I would say that it is based on a commentary. I won't call it a research article in that sense of the term. Uh, I think it is in the context of, as I told you, the, the G20 Global Land Initiative. So G20 Global Land Initiative is not a research organization facilitating studies, but it is essentially an umbrella initiative. No, there are there are efforts to restore land or clean land degradation by different initiatives. So the G20 Global Land Initiative is actually highlighting what is happening all over the world, thinking about the continuing challenges and what needs to be done more, and uh, essentially to bring public attention and the policy makers and researchers, sort of their, the attention of these people to the problems that first, the challenges that first. So in my district of peatland sites and here and their discussions, they were the basis of this comment. I call it as a comment. Okay, next one. Is that the next one? Yes, the next one. I think uh, uh, this is everybody in Indonesia know about it, but no, many people in other countries don't know it. One thing is sometimes they mix up with land fire with forest fire. Mm -hmm. Actually, they should know that land fire is actually a lot more complex than forest, forest fire. Because you know, when there is a forest, 
when it catches fire, fire, it is still. But peatland can exist in non-porous land also. Even in an agricultural land, there can be peatland. Even in an urban area, there can be peatland. So whatever activities that may happen in an agricultural area or even in an urban area can be to peatland fire. So this is something which is many non-Indonesians don't know. And I think it's a wrong thing to mix the peatland fire in peatlands with forests. We should see peatland fire as something very important, distinct, and lot more challenge. And of course, as I told you, peatland can exist in agricultural and residential areas, urban areas, and human activities are very important in these areas. Right? You cannot avoid human activities in these areas. And moreover, in places like Riau, 60 to 70 percent of the land has peatlands. That means that if you want to conserve all peatlands, only a very small part of the land is available for other kinds of activities. This is also, uh, and then very little land is available for other activities, and that needs to be taken into account. Next. So, peatlands uh, can be seen in conservation areas where I think it is uh, controlled by the Minister of Environment Forest. One can say that it is relatively easy to manage. The conservation areas, but uh, I could see that encroachments can be an issue, and the Ministry of Environment Forest admit, no, the officials admit that they don't have the resources to control all encroachments. So you come to that element. Then there are productive forests where which are used for different kinds of extraction of forests and non-forest, sorry, timber and non-timber forest products. There can also be human activities. There are certain challenges in um, in conserving peatlands there. To see that fires don't happen in those areas, we need a lot more resources. Then land leased out to tribal So these are uh, so for developing for agricultural purpose or plantation purposes, you know, palm oil is an important crop. And I think this depends on national policy to attract investment. I think it is important for Indonesia to attract investment. I think uh, it is important for economic growth, even to generate resources for environmental conservation, natural resource conservation. Governments need money. And uh, I think it cannot take a blanket approach against private investments. And that's understandable. But then there is this problem with land fire, because these private firms may be interested in converting land into palm oil plantations, etc., and then there can be fire, something understood. So even when private firms are banned from doing it, there are challenges implementation in the Then finally, the land use and control by people, communities, and their livelihood is very important. For example, if you go to Riau Islands, etc., I think there are poorer people, they depend on uh, subsistence agriculture or subsistence harvest of products or small scale fishing and so on. So they need land. But land is an important resource. Here. And I think uh, this is also very important. Next one, please. I think so. The first point is that it is recognized, but at the same time, not discussed adequately is that. Burning is the easiest and cheaper way of using peatlands for agricultural, industrial, and residential purposes. If you say that burning should not be done, or then it, it becomes very costly to use it for agricultural, residential, or agricultural, industrial purposes. Or if we say that they have to be very careful to avoid burning, even then it will be very costly. I think this is something very, very important to understand. Uh, so, use of alternative means can be very costly because now it's thick deposits of peatlands and uh, doing anything uh, without, uh, by conserving peatland can be very costly. So, need a higher level of care to avoid the peatlands 
fire and declines in agricultural and residential areas. As economists, we know that, or policy makers should know that care is also costly. And the care means not it's costly. The kind of, and the other important point is that the kind of agriculture that is possible by retaining field plants in its original form is not that remunerative in many parts. For example, DRGM promotes pineapple cultivation, but no pineapple itself is not that remunerative because most of that will be put to the local market and it is perishable. Uh, the national markets, uh, the transport costs will be pretty high. It's already a product here. So there are, there are many challenges in getting a significant income from those kinds of activities. So if people want to have, I would call decent livelihoods, probably it may become very difficult by retaining it that state. So in that sense, I think these are different from other kinds of forests. For example, I was in the, uh, West Kalimantan yesterday uh, in a tropical forest area. There, there are alternative possibilities of generating income from forest areas. For example, uh, I could see uh, even sustainable harvests of timber because now very good timber, quality timber is available. Uh, there are certain trees and certain nuts available which can be used for cosmetic products. So in that way, one can generate income. Or even uh, products like you know, bird nuts, honey, and those things can be generated without causing destruction to the forest. So even I think, um, uh, Indonesia, I think other kinds of forests have possibilities of generating a significant level of income, which can support the life of people there. But that's not the case in the East. So that will be the Take note. Next one. So if I'm looking at a kind of a distribution of cost and benefits of wetland restoration regionally, nationally, and locally, I'm, I've not put any numbers here, but I think there are, one can draw numbers from different studies, and these are there mentioned in some in the paper. But of course, peatland restoration, I think avoidance of peatland burning, peatland fires, is globally benefit. No doubt, it is good for the group, it's good for the international community, and there are estimates of the um, gains of. of gains from avoiding the impacts. There's no doubt. So global benefits higher than global cost. That is perfectly fine. But Indonesians have to bear a higher cost for this restoration. That's very important. Because a part or a substantial part of the global benefit goes to the international community. So that means so Indonesians have to bear a higher cost for restoration. And moreover, if you look at regionally and locally, especially in places like Riau Island, where 60% of the land consists of peatlands, local people may have to suffer a lot if they if we say that all peatlands have to be cut or they have to take extreme care to see that there are no fires. So there's a kind of I would call there is a, uh, a symmetry in, in terms of the benefits. There is a distributional uh, inequality in terms of the benefits. So, so this has an implication. So this implication is that this may reduce the domestic interest or regional local interest or incentive for restoration of impacts. So that's something which we need to be taking, which we need to consider, especially when we design policies and also when we design, uh, I would call uh, the kind of transfer mechanism, which we will talk about. So in that sense, I think there is no point in global blaming Indonesians for using peatlands in a way that may cause fire. So this is. This, there is an underlying objective reality, an objective reality which is determined by the sort of distribution of cost and benefits. And that's uh, the next point. Next one, please. So, yes, I think this, this is also evident from another, my, my point on the distribution of cost and benefits will become evident if you actually look at what is happening on the ground. For example, 
Indonesia has taken up BRGM uh, work to construct canals to minimize fire. It is essentially to re-wet the peatlands, or if at all they say fire, you have water source to sort of you know, convert fire and so on. But investment is not ready. For example, the RGM people told me that if they need four or five canals, they have the money to construct only one canal or maybe one or two. So that means you know, they don't have enough resources to invest adequately in that purpose. Similarly, BRGM support the livelihood of people. Now, some people get money, some people get support for pineapple cultivation and those kind of activities. But by looking at the requirement to discourage people from those from activities which can cause fire, the amount of money, the kind of amount of money that BRGM can give is very limited. So in that sense, I think there also we can see this inadequacy of the lack of resources. Uh, certain, of course, some initial environment and forest people will tell us that certain economic activities are banned, even some of the private investment, new farm oil plantation not allowed in certain areas, uh, uh, conservation area is fully protected, no economic activity is allowed there, but enforcement is a problem. There are Limitations, no? Ministry of Environment and Forest, whether at the central level or at the local level, they do not have enough people. Or even when they have enough people, they do not have enough resources to see that encroachment is prevented all the time. Controlling private companies, I think many people may say that, okay, why can't we simply ban all private investment, which may use peat uh, plants? But I think no democratic government can take a position like that because actually uh, there are domestic requirements for economic growth, there are domestic requirements for private investments, and I think that any government, any sensible government can take a completely anti position or a position against private investment, and you can see that kind of also. So in my, my view, I think this is a reflection of the kind of distribution of the cost and benefits that, we, uh, that I have already mentioned. Next one, please. So I think uh, in my point is that these domestic disincentives will reflect in the law enforcement. No, you can make a law, but how it's actually enforced will reflect the domestic incentives or domestic interests. So even if they come on the part of Indonesian government to restore five plants, probably there may not be enough resources. And that is evident from what is happening in BRG. Policymakers will be reluctant to ban all development activities that may cost the land fair. If you look at it, I think that seems to be the position of the government officials. So at least at the national level, there is a reluctance, there's already a policy and and that's partly there is reason and there is a genuine reason. Again, law enforcement activities may cause fire, that may cause fire. Enforcement may become very costly. You may need law more because no law more enforcement may happen, or there may be some financial and uh, political support for enforcement. No, you cannot avoid that. In local politicians and regional politicians, uh, they may have an interest to. Uh, reduce implementation or weaken implementation to see that this is not happening. So uh, inadequate in enforcement on the ground is also, I, I, I could see that evidence of problems, especially problems. Can are by sitting in the car, I think that everything should happen. But no, that doesn't And people depend on people and that their life depend on the next point. I think we should also understand the connection, possible connection between economy of Indonesia and peatland restoration, because practically a lot of people depend on land for life. I mean, I think as generally in, uh, in economic growth literature, we know that uh, uh, as part of economic growth and economic development, more and more people will move out of agriculture and take up jobs in non-agricultural sectors. But still, a lot of people, especially in certain problems, depend on that land as a major for subsistence agriculture or for collecting um, sort of land-based products. 
etc. landed for the forest based products. So, dependence on forest and natural resources is notable for a tight section of the population coin. And moreover, even the kind of industries, for example, whether it is plantation, I would call it plantation as an industry, but plantations or even industrial development also require land. And also, you cannot uh, concentrate the industrialization in certain areas and give other places. Uh, out of industrialization because of the people, local people need jobs. So, so it's wrong to expect all the people from Rio Islands to come to Jakarta for jobs. They need jobs there, so they need local industrialization. And but I don't know industrialization also is of such kind that then it requires sizable you know, land. Uh, and 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 another important development in Indonesian economy is that uh, manufacturing and agriculture continues to be important, but not that much on service. Of course, the service sector is important, but it could not give that many jobs no, to people. So, for example, uh, I'd say that IT sector development, or financing sector development, these things could have taken place with a limited amount of land, but no, the IT sector or financing, banking sector, financial sector, are uh, cannot be that kind of jobs to size of population that you need to start up. So in one sense, limited opportunities for what I would call conservation enabling economic activities like it was told about. Like for example, we are here because of the they can't be developed for sure in certain peat land areas so that they don't. But no, that also is limited. Like you know, for example, in, I, I don't know, you must be knowing in Africa that it's uh, Wildlife tourism in Africa can be a kind of a remunerative activity, but you cannot have similar income generation through ecotourism in, say, Rio Islands or some other So generally, I would say that economy yet to move towards a human capital or a service sector oriented one. So, and that can also be an important reason for the, the need to use a lot more land. And that can cost the grand fine. The next one, I think that seems to be the last one. So my point is that uh, this peatland situation has to be seen as a global challenge, a global issue. And I think by looking at the Indonesian implant use, I think probably they have to bear a substantial cost. They do not have enough domestic incentives, even when they act. For example, for because of the international pressure, etc., the government may accept that no, this is something that we want to do. But no, even when they accept, probably they, they may not be in a position to take all steps or allocate enough decisions. So uh, I think uh, need to transfer lot more global resources. Uh, Though there are resources, I think, but the actual amount that is coming to the ground is not that very high. I think that some of you may remember a kind of breaking down of a major project supported by Norway. And after a few years, I think it was closed down. Yeah, it, uh, it was closed down. And uh, my understanding is that you no, know, there can be problems. For example, there can be problems at the local level so that you no, know, the officials may not be in a position to meet the requirements of the funding agency, and the funding agency also should be a lot more sensitive to the needs of Indonesia. So, even when, for example, people talk about climate finance, but you now can we use the climate finance in order to see that climate finance globally or with climate finance goes towards uh, and restoration in Indonesia, no issue. So, uh, uh, so, and I would say that why can't uh, Singapore and Malaysia can be look I mean, tighten their relation on firms there for some of which are also causing the that I mean in that sense it can also be a kind of Indonesian international effort. So you know what like, I mean in Indonesia for causing fire and blocking their airline traffic there, so it's an important role for these countries also to take adequate steps. Uh, and that the technology plays a very important thing. Probably there may be a possibilities of using better technology for the conservation of peatlands or for the conversion of peatlands for uh, uh, other uses without causing fire, fire. And that would be something which uh, one can explore. Uh, in the Indonesian economy, we probably need to move more towards the service sector economy. 
what they did. Less dependent on land clear, economy which is less dependent on land, and that may require a lot of international support. I think it may be, it has to reflect in how many international trade agreements, international financial flows, and so on. So how can we sort of let, convince the global community to see that in, there is a need for more support so that Indian Asian economy can go through a transition. So all these are important, and I think, uh, I think that's the end of it, right? Next one. So that is what I've said. Yeah, the next one. So overall argument of the paper is that the direct and indirect cost of the land restoration is very high for Indonesia. Indonesia may get only a part of the global benefits of conservation. These may affect restoration efforts, even if there are talks, even if there are public pronouncements. So uh, it may affect the law industry. We learn restoration in Indonesia need global international efforts, need to transfer more resources. Indonesians have a I would call it to me the high cost restoring payments. Next, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Professor Santa Kumar, for uh, I think very interesting uh, argument on how to uh, restore our our plan. I mean, um, it's already like we are have a big challenge of the time restoration in Indonesia since 2015. Now, we still have um, like incident of uh, forest fire, especially when the long dry season uh, coming to Indonesia, like uh, El Nino, so it's, uh, it's causing again, uh, Pitland uh, fires in Indonesia, like last year, so uh, we experienced another uh, season of uh, fires with um, a cross border to um, Malaysia and Singapore. So, um, pitland restoration is uh, one way to reduce uh, um, uh, our um, transboundary heat pollution to the other countries. Like we have an obligation of international obligation to prevent um, our pollution uh, across borders. So not, do not cause environmental harm to the other countries. But the thing is, uh, we suffer, I mean, the local communities suffer most as the result of the uh, pitman restoration, because usually like Dayak people and people in Rio, Sumatra Selatan, they practices the burning uh, for opening land for the agriculture now with the uh, obligation of international obligation not to cause uh, transboundary harm to other countries we uh, the government uh, press the community not to do burning uh, otherwise they will go to jail so this is uh, like um, the government has imposed a very strict uh, regulation which is a uh, contraband with the uh, national uh, legislation which allow to a uh, hectare of their land, um, like the traditional land, to be uh, opened by burning uh, at the uh, national legislation, but at local level, uh, it is more strict. So, and then the government, uh, like the Jokowi, has make it um, like issue, uh, apa ya namanya, man, um, so it's it, it's more strict than the national law itself, which allow the burning um, practices for the uh, indigenous or local communities. So it's now we have like a uh, laws, uh, which is <laughs> very much- um, Draconian. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult <laughs> uh, whether, uh, whether uh, we allow to do burning practices or not uh, burning practice, but in central Kalimantan, uh, for example, they already changing the law. Uh, previously, they allow burning practices, but then uh, in this uh, year, they, they enacted the law that are um, a law only burning, um, opening burning, uh, not in pitland areas, like in mineral land. They allow to do burning, but only in mineral land. So this is uh, the regulation of Central Kalimantan, but uh, we don't know whether 
this can cause uh, jealousy with the local community like they uh, because um, burning is one way to um, make it the fertilizer for um, um, uh, agriculture for the uh, and without burning uh, the um, harvesting is not really good so that this, this is uh, this, this is the challenge how to make like opening uh, land without burning method uh, can be successful I mean uh, uh, with the harvesting because uh, with this, um, not opening uh, opening the land without burning now is not um, successful in the implementation. So the locals still uh, finding other way for the livelihood, um, like uh, working as labor in the oil farm plantation and etc. And the impact is actually uh, they lose their identity uh, as a farmer, and then um, also they lose their uh, uh, gotong royong i mean um, the uh, cohesion social cohesion of the community so uh, please i mean i'm i'm agree with um, uh, professor santa kumar uh, argument about uh, that indonesia need more uh, support for the uh, international uh, uh, to restore the pitland to uh, save uh, our pitland uh, because we still doesn't have any technology that can like um, give the uh, conservation and sustainable livelihood in a balanced way. So um, probably any question from the audience um, here or uh, online, please, um, Ibu Niken. <laughs> Maybe do you have any uh, other point of view, or? Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I think it was very good presentation and argument of the of Professor Santa Um, like Indonesia had to bear the higher cost for restoration and. It's good that when you said global community cannot blame Indonesia for using it in a way that may cause a fire. I think this is really something new. Um, two things that I'm interested in here when you said that there's a need to simplify the procedure of empowerment of uh, domestic official to assess global finance mechanism. This is uh, quite challenging in this case. It's a good, it's a good one. On the other side, when you said that Indonesia needs a support. This is quite interesting in the sense that uh, support can have a different meaning. So one of the thing in my mind is that whether it's possible, let's say, to value uh, people more in the sense that let's say they're not bread and there is a like um, payment something like that, and the price of the, the what is this, the carbon here when we talk about bread, um, it could be higher, that would be quite interesting Then people uh, here in Indonesia can get the benefit from that. So that's one of the things uh, in my mind, because uh, when we talk about uh, Having a what is this a livelihood from pitman from our research, not much they could earn from there. But if the carbon price is high, people can see the value of pitman, so they could feel that it's their asset. So that means they will be more careful in what is this managing the pitman. So. For the meantime, that's one of the things in my mind after the presentation of the reception. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ibu Niken. So, Ibu Niken, uh, recommend about carbon pricing, how, uh, like, um, it land conservation can, um, uh, I mean, benefit more to the local community with the carbon pricing scheme, like Indonesia, uh, we have carbon pricing, but not yet really 
um, develop. I mean, uh, we, we already like on the way to have a carbon pricing scheme, but um, still uh, uh, not yet fully implemented, probably, but I think this is a, a good one uh, to have like a carbon pricing and how uh, the local community can benefit from this uh, like uh, conserving the different of you think. Yes, I think uh, that is a possibility, but globally, globally, there is a lot of talk about carbon finance mm -hmm. that has not really enabled conservation. The seed recently, and we also talk about. But what we that is actually not doing anything with the land, I mean, that should also attract money from the carbon fee. For mm -hmm. example, in this case, no, they are not, they are, if, if they are simply conserving the peat land, or they are not doing anything with the peat land, that should enable them to get more money. And I'm not sure whether the carbon financing mechanism has evolved to sort of encourage. She must be mentioning about the international carbon financing mechanism. And uh, uh, I don't know whether the carbon finance mechanism has evolved to accommodate that kind of a requirement. But I think it is very important because in many places, uh, if people simply leave their resource untouched, that itself is beneficial to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emission and that will uh, enable them to get resources from others. But in the government, she mentioned on the issue of the government officials, no, what I found in, in my discussion, during my discussions with uh, on the failure of the Norway project, that, uh, yes, I think the uh, uh, local officials told me that the state officials told me that actually there was some kind of monitoring and evaluation requirements which could not be uh, fulfilled by the domestic officials. They also did not have enough capacity to do that. I'm, I'm, I may be wrong, but no, I think we need to understand that uh, declaration or sort of not saying that okay, some money is available is not that. Huh? So one, those who give the money to be a lot more sensitive to the local requirement. At the same time, the local officials or the domestic will be in a lot more, uh, I would call, empowered position to uh, so meet the requirements of the global finance. And both these are very important. Uh, are there any question from the audience? Uh, Mas Aji? Mas Harisa, Mas Rao? Okay, Sarah. I'm not really an expert on the so I have two maybe basic comments, relatively comments. Um, the first one is about traditional knowledge. So, do you think, uh, well, given that we did bring some basis, we can find any kind of traditional or local knowledge that has some potential to preserve or to conserve big land. I mean, sometimes traditional knowledge is better than anything in the knowledge and equipment to uh, protect the environment. Sometimes we do find any kind of traditional knowledge in basis. And on my second question was very well, you mentioned that there is no human resources in the forcing world, um, particularly in South and Southern Paris. And on the other hand, you say, we, uh, just, you just say that, um, well, people should get something like fit, although they do not pay So, I think uh, we may have to get about the regular and because we have one of the important things important a lot once there is money in a big land. But on the other hand, um, the government should um, take their hand on like, um, If you do not pay well, well we, we, don't, we don't need to do something essential. And if, so, what kind of regulatory mechanism would you suggest in this kind of 
Okay, uh, I think I, I need to clarify my points. One, uh, let me take the traditional knowledge. There are there is valuable traditional knowledge to many communities. For example, yesterday, sorry, last week I was in Sintan Agency uh, Kalimanta, looking at uh, how they manage the forest. And I could see a lot of value, a lot of value in the knowledge that we share. And that's very useful, whether it be in terms of the useful nuts or in terms of the food products or the non timber forest products, etc., that they collect. And I think. Uh, I was actually asking a company to say that you know, we should be developing more complex space based on traditional knowledge so that you know, they will also get a higher income. But at the same time, the parent that is also be some traditional knowledge. That's what we should Why is why is the best way of utilizing it? But no. Global problem was this much of co creation and global problem came late. Then the intensity of fire actually dropped. And only one can even argue that if you take the proper intensity of the problem, the fire created by the community is more possible. So the greater part of the problem will be done by the companies, which are actually investing in large palm oil climate. But now we see every fire. So traditional knowledge, at least the fire probably cannot be, you know, we need other other ways. On the other issue, I think one is slightly different. But it's a complete declared as national conservation agency. So people are not allowed to go and do But even in their area, there can be a difference. There can be a government and the Ministry of Environment and Forest don't have enough risk to see that encroachment. I think in many countries there will be such national conservation area and government has to put in a lot of risk. For example, I can tell you India is generally weak in many things, but in terms of guns, only controlled area, national park area, but India is doing a very big bad. Whereas Indonesia, though declared, some places as the national conservation areas, probably they do have the personal and the to do the conservation. They say that there can be interests or interests inside the areas, and there can be an immediate response on the part of the Ministry of Environment and Forest. And probably there are there is not enough equipment, there is not enough people to do that immediate response. Whereas the life, life take place in another area. In an area, uh, the, the second strategy is that you know, probably you have to give a lot more insight. How can we see that people gain or people gain by doing nothing? By doing nothing. And one has to think about you know, uh, the new mechanisms, what we are doing is giving them money or giving them seedlings for pineapple cultivation. But again, that's not enough. You may have to think about. Some strategies which can give them substantial amount of resources so that they can uh, do enough. Or I would say that in the long run, probably we have to think about economic growth or economic development. And at the younger generation of these people may have to move out. That way, and get into the service sector. For that, I'm mean, going to be more of an economist. But at the same time, that, will also, that should also be a possibility. What can the other countries do? See that, uh, in the day, for example, I would say that why not the support financial activities or agricultural activities in, in, in the region? Other way, investment for power and communication. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um... I um it's just like people uh doing nothing uh for this land and they can get a benefit from it. But the thing is uh, like in Sandra Kalimantan, most of the pit land areas uh like here in the um, uh near the uh main road, uh actually the local people have sell it to People outside of their field. So the thing is, um, 
this like um abandoned land like uh they, they are owner of this uh, land but the owner is uh, somewhere else so when uh the um land isn't coming the land and forest uh for uh are usually um happened in this like uh abandoned land like uh in this land so maybe we need to have like a mechanism how like this uh incentive and punishment of the owner of the land um whether uh they need uh, to take care of the land like um uh, uh because it's like uh, most of the uh fires usually starting in in this abandoned land or or conflicting land whereas there's no one uh in this area usually if, if the pit land uh are uh they have a plantation on it, like the um, rubber plantation and Mexico, usually they, they will take care of this land um, and um, they they don't want uh, their land to be burned, the plantation to be burned. And usually, uh, for example, in um, in a village uh, in Sido Dadi, in Central Kalimantan, I, uh, ex uh, we, we experienced that the forest fires coming from the border the other village which is um like the uh, shrub or abundant land and then coming to the other village like Sidodadi and they damaging all the um uh, like uh, crops plantation uh from uh, the village so uh the thing is uh probably uh this is one way is uh, how to have like reward punishment for the owner of uh the land and they need to take it uh, taking care of another example is uh in uh, Rio in um, I I have like visited the um we visited the place in a uh, Lukun village uh Lukun village is like a conservation area uh this uh area is uh used uh previously belonged to uh the companies but then uh they sent it back to the, the government and the government make it uh hutan desa uh, village uh, forest. But then in the in this village for as many encroaching, like you said, there's many encro encroachment from the other uh, villages in this area, and then many of the people are doing um, uh, cutting the timber, and then they um, uh, smoking in the in the inside of the forest, and then causing the burning activities, uh, causing the peatland burning. So this uh like we need also to strengthen the institutional like the economic how it's uh like there's no other alternative livelihood that it's more um can get more benefit to the local side like the with the mine not mine uh selling the timber which is the illegal <laughs> illegal uh, <laughs> timber uh like from inside the forest but the the Pillager, like the head of the pillager, cannot um, prohibit or uh, because they, they are like um, the family, so it's just difficult to uh, how to uh, persuade them. Um, like the BRTM, they provide the revitalization, but the revitalization is all is a failure. Like um, uh, for example, they have a corn fish, and this corn fish like is just all gone like um, it's not really alternative livelihood uh, so the, the the i think the way that the government need now is how to have like a cash crop cash crop which is cash this cash crop usually not really uh suitable with the um pitland pitland areas usually uh, uh, have like uh, for example sago plantation which is more uh, suitable uh, but usually people are more uh, into cash crop, uh, which is uh, more creating money, like um, uh, right and etc. But this is not really uh, suitable for the people. So we we need to have like um, probably more like you said the uh, carbon pricing uh, scheme, or maybe another. Uh, a sustainable livelihood, whether the local can have a burning, but it is controlled burning. 
Is, is this possible? Because now is the peer line are changing because of the drainage of uh, mega rights project, for example, in Central Alamata. They dug all the uh, the pit land and uh, uh, into the oil, oil farm, farm foundation. So the hydrology of the pit land has been changing. Uh, all the uh, all the pit land has been drained, and then and the, uh, when the, the fire starts, um, there's no no way uh, can help because it's already drained. Uh, and another example in, in Rio also. The um, hydrology of, of, of the uh, peatland has been changing uh, because of the oil pump plantation uh, in introduction to the, the community. Community, they have this oil pump plantation um, booming in 1980, and then all the peatland has been changing into this you know, oil pump plantation. And for the local People, oil palm plantation is is one of the uh, alternative uh, uh, economic that uh, has benefit to them uh, rather than conserving the peatland. Like um, the peatland is already changing into the oil palm. How can this uh, local like the, they they can get they have money from this oil palm changing to the other uh, suitable more friendly. Uh, plantation that are more, they can have um, uh, economic benefit also sustainable. This is uh, the difficulty of the government how to find uh, maybe a uh, food, but which food that they can benefit because is uh, oil palm is the, the only one that can get the um, like the economic is uh, pricey. I mean a good economic because of oil palm, palm plantation. So this is uh, I mean it's, it's very difficult. Uh, uh for the actually um uh, to manage the the the, the peatland that's already changing uh uh, uh changing ecosystem like the government uh blame the community that you are doing like a uh forest fire and then creating uh this um uh, uh, carbon emission to the uh, greenhouse gas emission but uh, on the other side the community think uh, that the government uh, they doing the um, a bad policy with um, allowing the companies uh, to step in to convert the pitland into a uh, oil palm foundation. So this is like who, who's blend who's like the, the government blend community and community blend the government and uh, um, uh, companies also like they don't want to be blend like they already like. Um, uh, practicing like um, not conducting um, uh, opening the land with burning, but the thing is uh, the subsidiary or uh, maybe they ask the local people to mm -hmm. burn mm -hmm. on behalf of the companies, like, um, okay, please uh, uh, burn uh, this land. For... So uh, the community would be supposed to uh, become the blending, but not the company. I mean, the company, okay, they say, but it's not, uh, so it's just like a complex, a complex problem like um, how we not really like uh, damaging the peatland but also have like uh, sustainable life but uh, now we still like um, I mean um, um, ongoing project with the peatland restoration but the thing is with, with the local uh, when I asked them, they say that the government uh, suppressed them and then uh, previously they can uh, produce the harvesting the um uh, the they can harvest the um rice uh, but now they should buy the rice because they they're not producing any more the rice and some of the uh, par parity of the rice the local party has gone like this uh, uh, local party uh, now uh, is is gone it's not protected so there's so uh, many implication of this that, that we need to uh, how to balance like um, uh, conservation, economic, sustainable livelihood, and um, um, we have many several efforts and still uh, many uh, gaps also in the implementation. So I think uh, we need to do uh, not only one single solution probably that will be more uh, complex and um, coherent and holistic. Uh, like from the government, from the local community, and then from international support, the companies. So all, all work together and like uh, 
helping how uh, to have this uh, balance. Like, uh, I know the local community also suffer from this, and the government need to to have like more incentive how to uh, help them uh, with their uh, shifting livelihood. Uh, like you said, I mean, uh, we need also to look into the more uh, characteristic of the local because every every uh, community has different characteristic different uh, like skill different uh, uh, so we need to have like the solution that case per case basis in every uh, village that is not really the same in every uh, like uh, one size fit all solution uh, is there any more question mas tio mas ajit This topic is new and uh, interesting uh, social um, My perception is that uh, there may be a national level kind of civil society activism for full time inspiration, but at the local ground level, civil society in case of inspiration. For example, some sort of academic they are there's an academic research, but beyond that, I think it is not leading to a kind of a civil society activism. So I this could be the reason, maybe, but even if the, the the way we plan is used is close connected to the local economy. Local economy, local livelihood, and also it is important for a national economy. So I do think this strong group which has evolved. So I would call a middle class set of people who may evolve wanting to make I mean, society is probably a middle class, you know. So I don't see that middle class emerging and demanding people and participation. In but probably I'm wrong. I see here the expected would be limited. Okay. Maybe you can ask that. Um uh yeah, I think. Uh, Professor Santa Kumar is right. I mean, in, in real, um, civil society activism for the Peter Association probably is not really showing and solid. But the thing is, uh, actually, since the uh, Peter Restoration in 2016, um, there are uh, many uh, actually uh, civil society activism. Who are involved in this uh, program, like uh, pit time restoration um, agenda, um, with the Desa Peduli Gamut, apa namanya uh, village awareness, uh, pit land awareness village. So the government has targeted to have like uh, I'm not sure is this five million of villages at Desa Peduli Gamut uh, in five years, and then. Uh, the government has uh, like targeted 500 uh, under their uh, authority and the uh, rest like um, another 500 is uh, for the so uh, civil society. So like Kumitran, uh, for example, Kumitran, uh, they have, they get funded from uh, Norway, from uh, Red Plus Norway. Uh, they uh, have like um, uh, Desa Peduli Gambut, like uh, for a uh, program, uh, this Desa Peduli Gambut is like they're making like um, 
uh, mapping of their uh, villages, uh, whether this is a uh, pitland and non pitland, and what is the program of their uh, like um, uh, conservation and refugeated uh, TR, the TR program, uh, and also a training for the MPA, ma MPA, masyarakat peduli api. Uh, and also they doing like um, to have a uh, brass gambut for example um, so it's a uh, rice that is harvest uh, in, gamb in gambut or coffee coffee uh, from the peatland so they make like this alternate livelihood um, like uh, semangka but itu namanya watermelon and then pineapple and etc so they try many many of the um, a uh, variety of the um, livelihood and commodities that are more friendly and suitable. Uh, but the thing is, uh, with this uh, uh, funding from the Norway come to an end, so they, they cannot <laughs> have like another funding. Right? So this stops so, uh, uh, from where they could not, uh, they find another activities like uh, Kamitraan, uh, and then WWF, uh, also they are, uh, get the funding from the USAID, USAID, and then I think there's many in Central Kalimantan, and this is uh, very solid in Central Kalimantan, but I know in Rio, this is just missing, uh, this uh, activism. Uh, I really don't know why, uh, but maybe because of Rio is um, oil pump foundation uh, area, also, the government support is oil farm foundation. So probably is uh, political, <laughs> political uh, that are yeah uh, more supporting the uh, oil farm foundation because oil farm foundation give them the the local revenue like uh, yeah uh, we all become uh, <laughs> uh, rich because of the oil farm foundation. Probably many NGO is not really growing there. <laughs> Because not really supported by the local government, but in uh, Central Kalimantan, uh, many uh, like um, uh, NGO like uh, partnership, uh, Kamitra An, and then from the USA, and then another for WWF, they and they are working very uh, closely with the local community to make like the uh, regulation. Uh, how uh, not to do the burning uh, practices and then many other regulation which is a uh, concentration of the peatland. But the thing is, it's not really like uh, probably it needs a long, long term period. Like um, it is not like uh, instantly um, we are changing the community more aware to the uh, like the revegetation. Many local also um, refuse to have this. Um, plantation that is more suitable to the peatland, but it takes a longer time to uh, harvest, like 20 years, uh, galang or other more uh, long term uh, plantation. It is not a uh, cash crop, so it is difficult for the community. So the community mostly reject this representation uh, because it's not really um, uh, benefiting, benefiting them. So they mostly uh, choose the uh, plantation that is more quick crop like oil palm. So mostly they changing into the oil palm plantation. Yeah, yeah, I mean the, the, in, the, in the beginning, yeah. But in the in the second or third year there, there's no need for burning. So uh probably uh, that's uh, my uh, answer for this. I think what she said is actually that my point is that the foreign funder government funded in activities. Also may not be that kind of credit. So the society activism to be a lot more credible actually need to be a lot more independent. independent yeah, yeah. So in a position to counter what if God represents do something wrong, it should be a sit to that, etc. That kind of civil society activism I can see involved. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, in Rio also PRG also support some of that. I can see right you know, sort of competitions. Price distribution, recognizing like some individuals, school teachers, school children, etc. But no, it is again seen as a kind of a government program and not necessarily a kind of society. Okay, I think that's enough.
Any more questions? Um, we still have five minutes. Mahagus, nanya. This fine is not really, uh, they pay, they don't really pay. Uh, they, they, the government win the, the case, but the thing is, uh, we don't have, uh, like they, apa lah, banding -banding lagi, or make a yield, and then finally they, 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 they not pay anything. So, uh, and, uh, how to make it this uh, fine? Let's redistribute it again to the uh, it's a restoration is not really clear. Like, what uh, ya? Apa ya? Apa sih yang di pantai itu? Bunikan mungkin tahu nggak sih? So, uh, we still need to um how to get the money from the companies that are liable. For the fire again of this uh, fire and use for the benefit of uh, not only for the data restoration but also for the company from the community communities because most of the communities that that the 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 they the company is only uh pay the um um the damages to the government not the local community so the, the local communities does not get any benefit from this uh, company to pay the um, uh, money for the uh, violation because of burning practices. So we need to... Yeah, then government, not the general so, so this is the problem. No, I think... Even if governments take a convenient approach to practice, we cannot blame companies are important, the plantations are important, as you said, a lot of people depend on plantations, plantations are important part of the economy. So, in any developing country, I think it is expected that you know, these people will have some power. Mm. You cannot blame Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Satu minit lagi, 1930. Oh, sorry, ada pertanyaan.
and uh, if you don't come in your hand, head experience, the trinket of Akhilunika, and is the doctor in the spot What is the international a team that can help manage the global support? No, I, I think we don't. And this starts, for example, let's just think about that uh, Norwegian program. Right. Why did it collapse? See, when, they, when they designed the program, I think they recognized that peatland restoration in Indonesia is globally important and uh, the international communities to do. But if you analyze the collapse of that program, I think it is due to a kind of what do call inadequate or lack of sensitivity to the needs of English. So that's that's the point, starting point. See, you can start with a global program to support education, but the actual money that comes to the ground may not be very important. So the purpose of writing article or purpose of this argument is to make global community a lot more mm -hmm. So it's not enough to declare that, okay, this, we will give this much money or we will give the support, etc. But how do we see that this money actually is leads or leads the, the ground? And yes, that is that also something very important. I think I, I, I was not at all uh, saying anything about the global contribution of Indonesia. Indonesia is an important partner in the world. And uh, of course, it is also part of the G20 countries, which actually um, part of an important set of countries. And uh, and moreover, even otherwise, I think Indonesia is also a kind of I would call it the depository of the global risk, not because of its location. And that's very, very important. But at least there is not enough, uh, I would call awareness, not enough sensitivity on this issue at the global level. Do you think that like international how to push the international to have more sensitivity on Indonesia? So to the Indonesia like negotiate or absolutely. I think we need to the point is that Indonesia needs to more in international rather than taking a defensive position. I think Indonesia needs to highlight even the negotiation on global agreements. Whether it is in terms of uh, negotiations on uh, what companies should do, what multinational companies should do, on all these things, I think Indonesia should be highlighted this position a lot more. Mm -hmm. and that's the purpose. I remember I told you that uh, probably Indonesian officials or Indonesian politicians need to highlight the global importance of protecting Indonesian um, peatlands. And the fact that Indonesia cannot do it alone, that part is something that needs to be highlighted in, in the international approaches. That's what I was having in my mind. But no, you may have a different view on it. Like, uh, for example, is, is uh, I mean, like the Norway uh, Red Plus team, um, it's uh, actually it's, it's come to a man and then now it's changing to the net policy. Uh, another scheme, uh, which is we want to uh, not only get that restoration, and previously we uh, focus on the restoration, but now it's more only how to have uh, carbon emission reduce uh, in 2030, uh, not only from the restoration, also for mangrove, and then from um, social forestry, and then um, avoiding degradation and for uh, degradation of forest and deforestation, something like that. So uh, Kitlan is one one of um uh, target also, but it's not uh, probably it's not uh, the main focus. Like previously the main focus is uh different yeah. restoration and then more more funding, more international funding come uh, to uh Kitlan restoration, but it is not really like the uh, main focus. Yeah, not the yeah. main focus. And it is not targeted uh, to the local community. Like it, it's more segmented into like uh, Ministry of Environment uh, governors working on their own, uh, Ministry of Environment policy working on their own, and then uh, fit restoration also working on their own. So it's just like 
different ministry has a different sector hall, so it's just like overlapping and then it's not really holistic, uh, like there's no coordination uh, between all these three ministry. So we need to have like more like... Um, I, I understood that, though I did not mention it, because uh, even though uh, BRGM works under the president, mm -hmm. I think it is not in their position. No. <laughs> so the uh, Ministry of Environmental Policy wants to manage all the data restoration, not the BMGM. So it's just like, so then it's a kind of a lack of funding. They want to manage the money. Probably. So I didn't, I didn't want that. But then as an outsider, it's not an answer of my part. But, oh, uh, yeah, uh, it's in internal. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, audience, there are more details on the Bu Niken, ada yang mau di uh, more uh, apa conclusion maybe? Well, I think it's it's, it's quite interesting uh, presentation as well as discussion. I'm talking about the RGM and the Ministry of Environment Forestry. Actually, they have different working area. So the Ministry of Environment Forestry, they they focus uh, within the forest area, while the PRGM they uh, their uh, working area is outside the forest area. Well, of course, they have to do uh, business, uh, coordination. Um, yeah, that, that's what they have to do, uh, basically. Yeah, they try their best. They have their own challenges. Um, definitely working with the local community is quite challenging, because, well, especially when the land belongs to the local community. So it's as if that they can do whatever they like because it's their own. Unlike uh, the private company, when they talk about the forest land, the government can uh, says, uh, impose their regulation. So it's not so easy when we talk about the local. That's basically the impression that I have uh, with what's really happening. And you're right that in the field that it's it's unclear division between forest land and non-forest land, whether it's a forest agricultural area or non-agricultural area. But when it comes to the government, uh, in the top level, then there's the Ministry of Environment Forestry, Ministry of Agriculture, Papanas. Uh, so that makes it quite um, different with, with what's really happening in the field. So as you mentioned, coordination is quite important at the same time, it's also challenging. I think that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Hurikan. Ada lagi yang dari online, kalau enggak saya tutup. Yang online, ada lagi yang mau ditanya enggak? Mbak Mel, siapa? Siapa lagi itu? Ada ya? Okay, if there's no more question, I would like to thank the Professor Santa Kumar for the very uh, interesting and very uh, provocative um, presentation. We give applause to Professor Santa Kumar. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your uh, thought and then uh, your um, uh, experience, your research on the chicken restoration. Um, hopefully we can like collaborate more in the future. Like uh, we are from Research Center for All, we are open for the uh, um, joint uh, research collaboration, uh, joint publication, then more future collaboration. Uh, PhD, I really don't know what PhD is. <laughs> um, um, yeah, is, is there anybody want to do a PhD in India? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Huh? <laughs> so uh, thank you so much um, and good luck for your um, rest of your stay in Indonesia. Uh, hopefully you can meet again in the next future. Uh, please let me know if you have any more like uh, business uh, finding and you can collaborate uh, more in the future. Uh, thank you. Um,
We have a token appreciation. Ada yang foto nggak? Karena aku nyanyi foto nggak? Mas potong. Thank you so much. Look at this, please. Okay, well. Thank you. Maybe we can do a picture together. Gimana ya? Di luar. Oh, yeah, di bawah ini. Oh, and this is. Thanks. Bapak itu nanti di di absen hari itu ambil slide-nya. Iya. Yeah. Uh, bikin kopi boleh. Eh, Kita foto dulu. Ya. Udah sama kamu. Udah sama kamu. Iya, Bu. Bu. Maybe you can take a picture of the slide. Thank <laughs> you. 